So the league is kind of getting insane. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've taken notice of the stunning offensive explosion in this current NBA season. It seems like every other night, some star is breaking or challenging some kind of statistical record. We have a rookie who's averaging 26, 13, and 4 blocks on his per 36 minutes stats. We have a star in Dallas who's averaging roughly a 35 point triple double, yet is only 6th on the NBA's MVP power rankings. Whether you're a superstar, an all-star, or a young and upcoming player, it seems like everyone is eating well statistically and getting their shot at breaking some records. At the time I'm making this video, NBA teams are averaging 115.6 points per game, which is literally the highest scoring average the league has seen since the NBA merger in 1976. If you look at the league scoring average, it has been on a steady and dramatic climb since around 2013, which interestingly enough, was right around the time that Adam Silver took over as the NBA's commissioner. More on that in a bit. Now before I get into why scoring has increased, I really want to drive home just how drastic the change has been. At the time I'm making this video, we're still a little ways from the All-Star break. Regardless, we've already seen three games where a star player has scored at least 60 points and lost. In the entirety of the 2000s decade, guess how many times a player scored 60 points and lost? It never happened. Not a single time. There used to be a time in the NBA where the star player scoring 60 essentially guaranteed that his team was getting the victory. But now, in the modern NBA, it's basically become a toss-up on whether or not his team wins, simply because there's so much more scoring overall, so the 60-point performance doesn't impact the game's outcome nearly as much as it used to. In this current 2023-2024 NBA season, 16 players are averaging at least 25 points per game. 25 years ago, there wasn't even 16 players who averaged at least 20 points per game. Here's another crazy stat to consider. At the time I'm making this video, Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns is averaging 28.2 points per game. He's not even the leading scorer on his own team, which happens to be Kevin Durant, who's averaging 28.5 points per game. Despite being only second on his team in scoring, Booker would be leading the league in scoring if he had those same numbers 25 years ago, and by a significant margin. In a 10-year stretch from the 95-96 season to the 04-05 season, not a single player had a 70-point game. In the last two NBA seasons alone, four different players have eclipsed 70 points. In a 10-year span from the 94-95 season to the 03-04 season, there were a total of 11 times where a team scored at least 140 points, and 7 out of those 11 times, the game went to overtime. In this current NBA season alone, a team has scored 140 points a whopping 57 times, and shockingly, only 10 of those went to overtime. Now knowing that, try to convince me that scoring isn't easier in this era. So now that I've really gone over the details, let's try to get to the bottom of why scoring has increased so much. Well the truth is, it's a variety of reasons, but some are more prominent than others. The first and most obvious reason is the dramatic inflation in three-pointers attempted. This is a chart of teams' averages for three-pointers attempted per game. This peak right here is when Steph Curry was the unanimous MVP and broke the NBA record by hitting 402 three-pointers in a season. And now this is the average of three-pointers attempted in the current NBA. As you can see, this just continues to trend upwards. The reason for this is simple. Analytically speaking, it's just smarter basketball. If a team shoots 100 two-point shots in a game and makes 50% of them, they'll end up with 100 points. But if the opposing team shoots 100 three-point shots and makes a lower percentage of 40%, they'll still end up with significantly more points than the higher percentage. Essentially, the three-point shot is the more valuable shot. So spamming the three is simply the smarter move. 
As the league has moved in that direction, more players have learned to shoot the three efficiently. It doesn't matter what your size is or what position you play. If you're out there on modern NBA courts, it is crucial for you to become a solid three-point shooter. Because of this focus on developing the perimeter shot, we are witnessing the greatest era of shooting in NBA history, and I believe that is an objective fact. Some might argue that more three-pointers and higher percentages are due to the fact that defense isn't as good as it used to be, which theoretically could be true. But you know where that doesn't apply? At the free throw line. Since the very early days of the NBA, the free throw line has basically always been the same. There's no defenders, just the player, the ball, the basket, and 15 feet of distance. In this current season, players are hitting 78.8% of their free throws, which is the highest average in NBA history. 25 years ago, players were hitting 72.8%. Although there are some rare exceptions, typically the best foul shooters in the league tend to be the best three-point shooters in the league as well. So the fact that this is the most efficient foul shooting season of all time, simultaneously as the NBA is emphasizing threes more than ever, comes as no surprise. Better shooting from the field means more space on the court, because now players have to be defended out further. More space on the court means more room to operate which gives the offensive player more freedom to create a good look for himself or for a teammate, and thus more points are being scored. Now here's the thing, although the inflation of threes plays a part, it isn't the whole story. For example, although the general NBA team is averaging 35 three-point attempts per game, they're only making an average of 12.8. If all of those threes were two-point shots instead, then teams would still be averaging roughly 103 points per game. And guess what? That is still a higher scoring average than any season of the 2000s. The pace of play and the field goal percentages play a major part as well. But now, let's look at some not so positive aspects. The NBA product is becoming less and less physical as time goes on. Defenders are not allowed to play defense with the same level of tenacity that they could in years past. Brutal fouls in the 80s and 90s were often just common fouls, but now many of them are called as flagrant fouls, which results in drastic penalties that teams can't afford. Offensive players driving to the lane is much easier when there's no fear of a rim protector or an enforcer type defender punishing him once he's down there. On top of that, you can no longer hand check players like you could in years past. Doing certain offensive moves, like a crossover dribble for example, are much more difficult to perform when the defender already has his hand locked on your midsection. Try to create space with those moves back then, and you're more at risk of a turnover. Now whenever someone makes this point, modern basketball fans and even some analysts are quick to argue that the game isn't actually less physical today, but rather the players are just more skilled and are harder to defend simply because of their talent. Although that is somewhat true in the aspect of perimeter shooting, it's still wildly incorrect to say that physicality has nothing to do with it. This is an interview from a couple years ago between NBA legend Kevin Garnett and current NBA commissioner Adam Silver. Listen carefully to what's said in this discussion. When I'm watching today's game, I feel like I'm downloading the latest play. And what I mean by that is, you know, obviously we can go through each age and see the game of the game and the style of how it's played. When I watch now, you know, points are like 144, I think I saw the other night, and 125. And I remember being in some all-star games where I think we scored maybe 144, 140. Like, is, is the high scoring working? Is speeding the game up? Because I want to know, will there ever be a time in our lives where the hand check comes back? Is that, is that going? Is this kind of the, the wave in which we're going now? I'll answer it coming from the fan in me, which is there was a point, I believe, you know, probably in around the late 90s when the game became too physical. Mm. And I think we lost some of for the- For our viewers, you mean? Yeah, and I think for our fans, from the aesthetic enjoyment of the game, where it de-emphasized the 
particular skill a player had mm. and maybe weighted too heavily physicality, where mm. a big, strong player could come in and prevent a incredibly skilled player from doing those kinds of things. Mm. I think of, not that he's a small guy, but a smaller player like Steph Curry can do on the floor. I think that when you think of some of his ability to shoot, his ability to move mm. through the paint, that if guys could just bang him and knock him to the ground, as that was once the case in the league, right. I don't think that would be a better brand of basketball. Mm. I also think we have to find the right balance. I... Now listen, this is Adam Silver, the literal commissioner of the NBA. And in this interview, he confirms several things. One, that the NBA wants more offense. Two, that the NBA is making it easier for offensively skilled players to operate. And three, that the NBA is less physical than it once was. This is the most powerful man in the league and the guy who officially oversees the NBA. I don't care if a former role player, a podcaster, or a YouTuber says that players are just better and that scoring isn't easier today. Adam freaking Silver is literally saying that the league has an agenda to make it easier. And of course, the numbers back that up. By the way, this isn't anything new for Silver, as he's been making comments like this as far back as 2018. When you hear these statements from him and see his perspective, then it's no wonder why offense has been dramatically climbing since he took over around 10 years ago. So here's how I personally process this. I don't want to be the kind of person who's on either side of the extreme. I don't want to be swooning over these modern players, just glazing them and saying they're better than former greats just because their numbers look better on the surface level. But at the same time, I don't want to be an angry old head who just slanders these star players for the changes the league office is responsible for. The way some of these 70 point games get criticized would have you thinking that it's almost seen as a bad thing. On one hand, I appreciate the fact that we're witnessing some incredibly talented players, and I believe simply the best era of perimeter shooting. These guys deserve the appreciation for what they're doing. But on the other hand, yeah, I think MJ would average 40, I think Kobe would score at least 90 in this era, and I think Bird and Magic would have averaged a triple-double. You can appreciate the greatness we're seeing today while still acknowledging that it's an era that fuels offensive greatness. That's at least my stance on it. So what do you guys think? Is there too much offense in the modern NBA? And if you think so, how would you change things if you were the commissioner of the league? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.